Hey, church family. How many of you are old enough to remember back in the day when you might be watching television and you'd see an announcement like this? This is a test. This station is conducting a test of the emergency broadcasting system. This is only a test. I won't force you to listen to the entire 60 seconds of that announcement, but I want to remind you that the wording of that announcement was, this is a test. This is only a test. And that wording was intended to assure the viewers that what they were experiencing in the announcement they were receiving was not going to last forever. There was an end in view. And I was thinking about that this week as I was reflecting on some of the heroes of our faith whose stories are recorded in the Bible. Individuals who walked faithfully with God, and yet, instead of being rewarded for their faithfulness, they suffered for it. One such individual was Joseph, whose story is recorded in Genesis 39. There we read that Joseph's master took him and put him in prison, the place where the king's prisoners were confined. Now, Joseph's story is a reminder of the truth that sometimes we might pay a price for remaining faithful to the Lord. As a slave in Potiphar's house, Joseph worked hard and utilized his shrewd administrative skills to increase Potiphar's wealth. We're told that the Lord blessed the house of the Egyptian because of Joseph. And that's quite a compliment. There was just one small problem. Joseph was handsome, too handsome. And while serving in Potiphar's household as a slave, his master's wife relentlessly pursued him tempting him with every seductive trick in the book. Yet Joseph never once caved. Life had dealt him a bad hand. His brothers had thrown him into a pit and sold him into slavery. Humanly speaking, he had every reason to surrender to temptation. But Joseph didn't. Instead, he said, How could I do such a wicked thing? It would be a great sin against God. One afternoon, taking advantage of an empty house, Mrs. Potiphar threw herself at Joseph. And as Joseph escaped, she grabbed his robe and used it to falsely accuse him of sexual assault. And then Joseph was thrown into a cold, dark dungeon. Well, so much for doing the right thing and obeying God, right? How would you feel if you were Joseph? Angry? Scared? Like God was treating you unfairly? We think the Lord will reward our faithfulness with smooth sailing and exempt us from major difficulties in our life. But scriptures filled with stories of people who, like Joseph, were faithful to God, yet still found themselves in dismal situations. In fact, life often became harder, not easier. Worse, not better. Consider three examples. First, Moses. After obeying God and telling Pharaoh to let the Israelites go, the Egyptians made the work even more demanding for the Hebrew slaves, and the slaves in turn blamed Joseph. Or consider Jeremiah, faithfully proclaiming the message that God had given to him. And what was the reward for his faithfulness? Jeremiah was thrown into an empty cistern. Or think about the apostle John. John was a faithful servant of God. What was the reward for his faithfulness? John was exiled to the island of Patmos. Now, certainly there's no greater example of faithfulness to God than our Lord Jesus Christ himself. He was completely obedient, never yielding to temptation. He was perfectly faithful to his Father's will, yet his faithfulness led him to Calvary. But what we need to remember is that the cross was not the end for Jesus. So I want to encourage you, if your faithfulness to the Lord has lent you into an adversity, just know that you're in good company. Joseph, Jesus, and many others know how you feel. Pastor and author Tony Evans puts it this way. He said, the most critical test you'll ever face is the test for suffering when you did nothing wrong, when you do exactly what God has told you to do and have to pay a price tag. You're paying a penalty for righteousness sake. You are on an intended detour that'll test and strengthen your character and resolve if you'll let it. Remember, the prison was not the end for Joseph. It was just a pit stop 
in God's sovereign plan to get Joseph exactly where he wanted him to go, which was Pharaoh's palace. And I believe the five most encouraging words you'll find in Joseph's story are the words in Genesis 39, 21, where we read, The Lord was with Joseph. I pray that you and I would remember that just as the Lord was with Joseph in prison, he's still with you and me. And regardless of how things might look right now, he really does know what he's doing. Amen.